I want to quickly update you guys on last week's adventures or last week or a couple of weeks adventures so i think i mentioned prior that i wanted to go to fold to go see d dan and law cross play for this um night called night service which i hadn't heard of before i guess they do events prior to this beforehand but essentially his promoters were putting on this event at fold for the first time and they were bringing over d dan i think might have been his london debut i'm pretty sure it might be his london debut and obviously law cross come down too and those are two people that i'm familiar with because of social media the power of social media and it kind of got me thinking about the way i use it in terms of promoting myself when it comes to the djing side of things because i think i don't necessarily put out many clips on my own personal instagram page in terms of the podcast i do and record but if you look enough if you look deep enough into it into my links and my bio and stuff there's usually a link to the podcast somewhere shape or form there there might be a picture or two or a little clip i've uploaded to myself djing on my instagram profile but i don't necessarily push it as like oh this is me 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 and this probably comes from a lot of self-confidence issues maybe it may come to a lot of perfectionist store stuff too thinking that maybe the thing that i'm putting at isn't quite the level that i want people to see at the moment but i do think there is something to be said for just you know doing a virtual and putting it out regardless it doesn't matter just keep putting it out keep consistently sending the message that you're this person you're this person you're this person because of course it's congruent right to who you actually are so why not share that with the world and I think that one of the reasons why I think this was this was why I'm bringing it up because I think over the last what two years, especially when I'm doing lockdown, most of my time was spent you know lusting for flipping nightclubs, right? So I was online watching old clips of clubs, people in places. I was watching old festival stuff. I was watching DJ live streams that most of us were doing at home. And one of the places that I was watching a lot was Hall, right? That that station from um, Berlin. It's like in an underground toilet or whatever it may be, right? The green one everyone kind of goes to to play at nowadays. And it's essentially now turned into essentially the German version, the Berlin version of Boiler Room. They've kind of really blown up over the last couple of couple of years. I've saw they've done now live streams at festivals and stuff, which is big money because, you know, they're basically paying for their services and whatnot. The views some of these DJs are getting on there are crazy. Some people I haven't heard of are getting like 50 plus thousand views on their streams and shit. So it's really taken off in a big way. But I think one of the real kind of um one of the real sort of i think amazing parts of that station is the fact that they're able to showcase people like this and essentially give them the opportunity to kind of touch different audiences and fans and stuff myself included because i'd never heard of d dan or law croft who i mostly discovered through instagram but d dan i'd never heard of beforehand prior to not checking him out um playing on obviously hall right and one of the first sets i think i saw was this one courtesy of um Hall Berlin right and this was from 22nd of January I think last year it was the first time I said and again I never heard of the kid beforehand um, I might have seen his face somewhere in line but I never really paid much attention to what he plays and what he's about and whatnot I'm gonna quickly play a little clip here I'll just jump across maybe it's like you know 30 minutes and see what he's playing but this is kind of how I kind of discovered who he was and what he was about absolutely flawless mix in it flawless 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 mix and then when it comes to law croft i discovered her via this page called uh, rave don't stop and they posted this epic kind of clip from her playing i think what was it some sort of fundraiser for ukraine 
um, and I guess towards the end of the show, it says in the title, an incredibly emotional closing track, a moment from Laura Croft during her set at Club Culture United stand up for Ukraine set in Hall Berlin. So yeah, I think this is the yeah United We Stream set. I think they were raising money for Ukraine once. I think this is at the time when the war was first breaking out there, and um, she played this song because I think if I'm not mistaken, it was something to do with one of her one of her closing tracks from the first time she played it in Ukraine or in Kiev. And obviously Kiev's got a massive techno scene there and she's got loads of friends there, I'm assuming too, who are probably stuck and kind of go through incredibly difficult hardships at the moment. So you can only imagine, you know, once a war breaks out and then you can be asked to play at this fundraiser, what those sort of emotions can kind of bring out when you're playing this track on this sort of live stream. And again, this is the main reason why I discovered who she was as well as a DJ herself. So the power of social media is fucking incredible. so cool isn't it so yeah so why i bring this up i said to you i said to bring this up in general in terms of myself in terms of thinking about more more ways i can kind of do pushing myself in terms of the djing thing and putting it out there making myself more what you call it visible in that way shape or form especially nowadays that the whole like playing in clubs things or bars for the most part is sort of dried up why not use this opportunity to try and push out more of my content and put it online so the plan is going forward especially after being inspired about watching these guys play in Flip and Fold, it's most likely I'm going to either set up another channel or I think at the moment now there's places where you can buy smaller channels and just kind of rebrand them, set, set up shop on there and be kind of put on my live streams on there more often and just do it more often really. That's basically the plan. It's not really rocket science or anything, but I just need to do it way, way more often than I'm doing at the moment because I just don't feel like I have enough of an identity online as a DJ that would actually... That will make anyone give a shit, do you know what I mean? And I feel like I'm a lot of these people, what they end up doing for the most part, you know, how seriously they take it. Oops, I'm not going to play it. But you can tell how seriously they take it from just how they present themselves online and stuff. And I feel like I need to, to do that more often now going forward. So that's the plan with me going forward in that regard. But that being said, man, these two guys that flip and fold, it was maybe one of the better events i've been to in a very 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 long time i have to be honest one of the better ones i've been to in a long time and i think <sighs> there's not enough said about how important it is i think that this place exists in london honestly legit fold right and more so because of just the idea of there being one place in this godforsaken city that's number one open until six and the number two most problem maybe even number one most important is the fact that you have to flip and cover the lens on your camera phone like they make a point of it once you go to the flipping um once you queue up outside there's usually a bouncer that's got like a palm of tickets or stickers that they give you to tag on your thing the only thing i'd say if i would kind of make an improvement would be like it would be better if they would just you know once you're going to the security check-in to kind of you know unload your flipping phones and positions into a bowl it probably make more sense if they just gave the security guards the stickers and told them to put them on the phone but i would imagine those type of security guards they'd probably want to ch charge you more for basically applying the stickers on the phone. So most likely as a compromise, the fold said, hey, just give them the sheet of stickers and then they can put them on there, but insist that they put them on there because obviously the security guards don't want to be fiddling, you know, taking off stickers and putting them on phones, especially when it's cold or whatnot, or they're wearing gloves. It doesn't make any sense. So I get it in that regard. But I think even if you don't end up putting on your phone and you just lie, pretend you don't want to do it or whatever it may be, I think just the act of them doing it to you and telling you to do that, is akin to a security guard saying hi to you when you walk into a store. It's like, you know, having worked in retail, part of the reason why they do that is sort of like psychological. So you can kind of, if you were thinking about shoplifting, you're now aware that that person saw you, right? Because part of the reason why people shoplift or part of the reason how people shoplift well is that you don't want to be seen. But where, whereas it depends on if you're a graffiti type guy who does, you know, does the old racking from back in the day, you actually make it a point to make yourself seen so that you look less suspicious. But anyway, usually for the most part, people don't want to be seen. So if you alert them that you've seen them, it usually kind of 
takes down the chance of them going in there and kind of stealing all your happy, you know, your Kinder Buenos and shit. So you, the fact that they even give you the sheet in a fold, I think it makes you kind of automatically understand, okay, cool, I'm in a different space. And it kind of clocks you out in a different way. Then you have to kind of go through the security thing and open up your bags and whatnot. And they're usually pretty jovial. It's a pretty fun experience. Not fun, but you know what I mean? It's not the most intrusive experience ever in the world in terms of the search. Then you go get your ticket, you know, looked at, you take a picture of the thing, which is a little bit weird. But I feel like the fact that they have it at the same place where you get a ticket, it kind of takes away the kind of creepiness of it. But I don't really like it too tough, but it is what it is. Then you walk up the stairs and then you kind of start your little mind pilgrimage, your little mind cleanse in terms of getting yourself ready for the rave. And you open the big doors, you're welcomed by the, all the, you know, lockers around you, the person, you know, renting out the padlocks and whatnot. But in general, I think there's a loads of processes even from opening the big heavy doors. It kind of, at every turn, it feels like you're being prepared to party in a different way than you've have done in any other club in London and again for someone that's travelled to Berlin and been to all the best clubs in the world out there I feel like they've done a really good way of kind of copying all those kind of assets or best parts of those kind of places without making it feel anything too cringy do you know what I mean it's still kind of it. they still kind of do their own thing in that kind of way and I feel like when I went to this event called Night Service to see D-Dan and Laura Croft play that was something that kind of really took me you know kind of surprised me again once I was there because again I go all the time to fold but it's just nice to kind of see that kind of reminder once you're in those kind of spaces and damn man those guys absolutely blew the roof off that place man Lord Croft is definitely somebody that I would say is a new favourite DJ of mine because I've listened to d even though I haven't seen him before I've listened to his sets online so I knew kind of what to expect but Lord Croft definitely blew my face off in terms of surprising me what she's about and both of them seem like generally nice people too so that helps it should, shouldn't matter really you know the DJs can be pricks or artists can be cunts and you should be able to separate the person from the art but I still think it's nice when the person's decent and they've got like they seem like they've got a good heart so you kind of want to root for them and yeah man I had an absolute blast of a time I can't lie really really great time and I have to kind of give night service credit because I think they've got another event coming up which I can't actually go to unfortunately at the venue MOT loft coming up soon but really very well put together night um I think it's a like a boyfriend and girlfriend couple uh situation who kind of put the event together with um and then maybe this is person as well i don't, forgot which one it is but someone in this lineup is a boyfriend and girlfriend and they've got a, another friend that they get involved in so it's kind of a little bit of a family affair but i love the fact that they kind of go out there and get people who don't necessarily play here too often and kind of introduce them maybe to a different crowd mix it up a little bit here and there because they've got yeah they've got this event here coming up on the 9th of july um featuring some people who i don't know Al alarico grace doll so yeah, who's that? Da, 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 da. Who's Alarico and Grace? I don't know who these people are. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Um, Alarico visits via Italy and Berlin, and we are beyond excited to have him for our London debut. Again, loads of London debuts. That's pretty cool. Um, neighborhood hall restaurant. Da, da. Talented Grace Star joins us from Amsterdam. So yeah, loads of people that you don't really know too tough about. But I would definitely say I trust their programming. So if I see Night Service in the promotional headlining top title whatever it may be I'm definitely going to go out of my way to go to their events because I had a blast at Fold it was really one of the funnest experiences I've had in a very very long time clubbing and everyone was on a, on a, on a good vibe there people were really going for it um, and yeah I had an absolute blast I can't complain man so that was one of my highlights of the weekend actually so definitely 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 recommend you check out um, Fold and Night Service and what they do there and in general just the place anyway because they usually got fun events on there and <laughs> As clubs go, it might be a bit pretentious for the first time you go because, you know, people take themselves very seriously there. But I think in general, I still think people are, I still think it's legit. I mean, as, as places go, it's still one of the more, more legit places to be at. And I'm definitely thankful that it exists here for sure. Definitely thankful it exists.